Hey guys, in this tutorial I'm going to show you a quick way to isolate a single object and change its color while turning the rest of your image to black and white in Photoshop using only the color range selection tool, adjustment layers, and layer masks. You can download the project files for this tutorial to see exactly how everything was put together and to have a photo to work from if you don't have one of your own. Let's get started. So here's our source image and what I want to do is isolate this red couch in the middle here and turn the rest of my image into grayscale. So the first thing that we need to do is make a selection on our couch. So the best way to do this when you have varying tones and shades of a single color is to go to Select, Color Range, and first I'm going to use the eyedropper to click on one of these middle red tones here, and then I'm going to switch my eyedropper method to Add. That way anything else that I click is going to be added to my selection. So you can click around on the couch and add all these different shades of red to your selection or you can just click and hold and drag around the image to add everything to your selection. So you want to be more thorough with this part because the better your selection is the better the overall effect is going to be. And you can see in this little thumbnail over here that I'm missing some spots so you can also click in that thumbnail and drag around to add those to your selection too. You'll also notice some of the things that aren't the couch are added to the selection, but we're going to fix that later. So that looks pretty good, so I'm just going to hit OK. Next, I'm going to come over here and click the black and white adjustment layer, and that's going to create a black and white adjustment layer using our selection as a layer mask. And you'll notice right away that it turns the couch gray and everything else has its color. So what we're going to do is click on that layer mask and press Control or Command I to invert it. Now what we need to do is clean up our selection so it doesn't have all these other items in it. So to make the colors stand out more and make this a little easier, I'm going to add a hue and saturation adjustment layer, and I'm going to turn the saturation all the way up. So now you can see a whole bunch of other things that we don't want included in our selection. So I'm going to go back down to our black and white adjustment layer and click on the layer mask, and using the brush tool, I'm going to paint white on anything that I don't want included in the selection. So this part is a little tedious, but like I said, the better you do on your selection, the better the overall image is going to look. You'll also likely need to zoom in on certain parts of the image to make your selection more accurate. Now, I could spend a whole lot more time perfecting all these edges, which is what you want to do if you're making a high-resolution image, but for the purposes of this tutorial, I'm just going to finish up here quickly. So now you can see our selection is pretty much limited just to the red couch. So I'm going to go over here into the Layers palette and turn off that Hue and Saturation layer, and you're pretty much done. But now what you can do is, if you want to turn that hue saturation adjustment layer back on, you can take the saturation back down to zero, and then you can use the hue slider to change the color of the couch. You'll also likely need to make little changes to the saturation so it doesn't look too colorful. Lastly, a good way to blend your layer mask in with the rest of your image is to select it all by holding the control or command key and clicking this layer mask thumbnail and then making sure you have that layer mask selected, go up and click Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur, and just give it about a one pixel blur. And that'll just help it blend in with your original image a little better. And that's it. The better your selections are, the better the final image will look. But a lot of times when you're creating something like this for the web, you don't have to be too accurate and you'll still get a good outcome. I'm John Shaver for Photoshop Video Academy. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.